It's Mark Laughlin with the Ambidextro Gunfighter. So, a Springfield Armory Hellcat followed you home one day. Now, when it comes time to look at domesticating this little predator, make sure you don't, uh, when you don't try to declaw it and try to turn it into a Rottweiler. Because what you're going to end up with is a simpering, whimpering, piss on his belly dog. Be careful on what you do to upgrade this thing. Uh, like the rule in medicine, first do no harm. Now, you bought this Hellcat really for a reason. Now, what are those reasons? Okay, the reasons you bought this Hellcat is because it is small, lightweight, compact, and holds 11 rounds. Now, the size and weight is critical. And the fact that it holds 11 rounds in this size and weight is amazing. Now, the really cool things about the Hellcat, one is the grip height. It's pretty short, just a little over four inches. That means that it will not print. And it's underneath your clothing and inside the waistband gear, and it's not going to, you're not gonna, you're less likely to see that, that grip poking out of your clothing or denting your clothing or printing through your clothing. Now also, if you're gonna, like me, pocket carry it, you want it to be able to fit in your rear pocket or your front pocket. In order for it to do that, it's gonna have to be short. And the grip shot has to be short and it has to be relatively short overall length. So those are things you don't want to harm when you domesticate your Hellcat. Now with this Hellcat, in order to get your pistol to fit into your pocket, this short overall, the barrel length is only three inches long. Now, of course, it'd be better if it had a 3.6 inch barrel as far as ballistics are concerned. Uh, that would uh, certainly improve it. It'd be more like a SIG P365. But if you extend this barrel out a half inch or more, it's not gonna fit in most pockets anymore. So, in order to retain the pocketability of the Hellcat, you need to keep that grip length, grip height, and barrel length in mind. Otherwise, go ahead and get a 3.7 inch, you know, pistol like a, a SIG P365XL. Now, I suspect there will be a long slide version of this coming shortly from Springfield Armory with, say, a 3.7 inch length barrel on it. And with the longer barrel, you can give up a little bit of the pocketability for a little more kinetic energy. Now, another thing you want to maintain are the anti-snag features on this pistol. Now, anti-snag, you think typically think of the SIG 365 SAS, but this has some pretty terrific anti-snag features with regards to the controls, the slide release and the takedown lever. They are embedded in this, uh, this fence that uh, kind of protects the slide from your hands. So that is very cool, very cool anti-snag feature. Now the rear sight is a little bit of a, a snag hindrance. So it would be nice to have uh, a lower, you know, flusher sights or SIG SAS-like sights or use this plate to put in a very flush fitting laser right there. That would be, I think would be pretty cool. So with this Hellcat, what we have is a very versatile pistol pocket holster inside the waistband, outside the waistband, in your chest pack, this, like this uh, hill, hill People runner's kit, um, vest carry, like in uh, uh, Wyoming Traders Cody CCW vest. Now, this is actually a pretty capable pistol, at least I found it, I don't know if it's just because it fits my hand just perfectly or what, but after 400 rounds, I now find that I can shoot this as well, if not better, than uh, my FNS-9C. The FNS-9C has a grip where I can get all three fingers on the pistol grip, whereas on the, the Hellcat, my pinky does drop off the bottom. I've not find, found that to be a problem at all. I think part of it is great sights, also just good uh, point shooting point ability. I can see the Hellcat as being that universal, you know, fear the man that has just one gun because he knows how to use it, pistol. And yet, it can still be a pistol that handles everything. It can be your pocket pistol. It can be your inside the waistband pistol. It can be outside your waistband pistol. Uh, it can be your nightstand pistol as well. Now, what are some upgrades that I think undermine 
what this pistol has accomplished. Number one, I think the worst thing I think you can do is put an RMR on these. Now the RMRs are all the rage lately, but for a pocket pistol, that well that basically, putting an RMR on here is going to make it impossible for pocket carry unless you have humongous pockets. And so, uh, and then it, it's another snag hazard. It's just, uh, to me, kind of ruins what this pistol is all about. Now, why did I get the OSP version, if that's what I think? Because I'm hoping that somebody makes a laser, a really flush-fitting laser that fits right there. That would be awesome. Or like that sighting system on the SIG SAS. That would be sweet. Get rid of these sights. Something really flush there would be really cool. Now, another thing I think is the whole thing on mag extensions. If 11 rounds is good, how about we put a magazine on here that holds 17 rounds? It extends way out there. Now, it's okay to have a mag, extended mag for off, you know, carry if you do carry an extra mag. But for concealed carry, I'm not going to run it with that mag in there. I mean, sure, I get a better grip on it, and sure, I could probably shoot a little bit better at the range, but this is not a range gun. This is a concealed carry pistol. I want that concealability. I want that short overall grip length. I put this in there. I put a longer mag or even, you know, the excess third party ones are even longer than that. And this is no longer a pocket pistol. Sure, it's fine to throw in there for bedside. That'd be good. Versatility. But for con normal use, it's going to have that flush fitting mag. Not even with the pinky extension on there. Flush fitting. There's no, it's not a problem controlling this thing with two fingers on the grip and one underneath. One-handed is not a problem. It's not as jumpy as everybody seems to make it out to be. Now, another modification people might think of is the trigger. Now, the uh, it has a pretty good trigger. It's not great. It's not PPQ-like trigger, but it's 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 certainly good, more than adequate. Now, um, you could get a third-party trigger, and maybe make it a little nicer. I. I mean, besides the expense, I think money would be better spent on ammo and then uh, one of those laser cartridges, laser training cartridges to practice dry firing at home, um, than to buy a trigger for this thing. The trigger is certainly adequate. You can certainly learn to run this thing. Uh, another thing is if you have a, you know, if you upgrade the trigger on this and you do get involved in a self-defense gunfight and you are in a court law, court of law facing, you know, some legal issues. Um, having that trigger in there, a, a, a third party trigger in there, there's going to be people, they're going to make a big deal out of that. So just stick with the stock trigger, okay? Now, it's been a lot of talk about the trigger, about how if you push it a little bit sideways, you, you know, it kind of locks up. Now, I think that isn't, uh, you know, ideally that wouldn't do that. But if we want to rationalize it, and maybe it is just a rationalization, if this is a pocket carry pistol, we could see that, you know, if or in a purse or something with a lot of junk in there if something pushes up against it you know the side of it maybe you kind of want this to, you know if an object's getting down there around the trigger you kind of want this to get locked up and not fire but um, that's probably just rationalizing the whole thing i think it's actually going to break in and uh, it's going to round off that little edge back there and it's going to no longer lock up but uh, so far after 400 rounds i've not had any issues with it locking up so I just don't think it's an issue if you're shooting, you know, even close to shooting properly, but we'll see. We'll keep running it as it is stock. We're not going to modify it. We'll see if uh, we can make it fail in use and not just by focusing on it and, you know, taking the time to push sideways on the trigger and, and get the trigger safety to lock up and then see if, you know, it's jammed, jammed up tight. Similar to putting the RMR on there is a whole thing about, oh, everybody should put a light on their pistol. Um, I'm not a fan of running lights on handguns. There are some really big names that insist that a light on your pistol is the first thing to put on, and I disagree. I have a video on why I do not think a light is an ideal thing to put on your pistol. I do think it's a good idea to have one to put to use in your off your support hand you might say and so that way if you're checking your home and clearing your house you can bring up a light and shine it to identify a target and you know potentially a family member without pointing the muzzle of your pistol at a potentially a family member i want to keep the muzzle down in a safe direction and then use this my other hand to run a light and identify my target 
I would rather take that risk of maybe I don't get the shot off and I lose my life against a bad guy than muzzling and accidentally shooting a family member. So that's uh, why I, one reason I just don't like lights on, on pistols. Turning on a weapon light destroys your night vision. Uh, of course, on the positive side, a thousand lumen light, if it hits your opponent's eyes, will wreck his too. Now what about grip coverings? You know, the stick-on sticky grips or the rubber band type grips that stretch and grip on there. Again, I think that you're kind of crushing the whole design effort that Springfield has put into this pistol. It is made to be as compact and small as possible so it can conceal carry well. You put other stuff on there and you're just, ever, but slightly, but you're increasing the girth of it. And there's no need for that. This, the, this grip is just terrific. It's just fine. There's, it's not going to come out of your hand. You put a, you don't even have to hold it that tight. It just works good. Now, a lot of uh, people are going with the putting the the striker plate on here, the custom striker plates that have the uh, little, you know, cool little sayings on them or insignias on them or whatever. I think it's better to stick with a simple black rear plate uh, why put something else on there other than it's going to be a, a gun safe queen and you're just going to bring it out and show friends and family if it's a real self-defense handgun i don't want anything bright back here i don't want any markings or lettering or drawings back there that'll draw my eyes away from the sighting system now similarly if you paint the pistol uh and one thing I would love to see is this thing be uh, Cerakoted in a uh, uh, Grum Grumman Hellcat F6F color scheme. But if you do paint it, make sure you maintain a black matte or dark matte color on the top here. You don't want any light reflecting off of that into your eyes. You want that to be a non-reflective surface so that your eyes, again, total focus on the sights if you're bringing it up to your sights. Now, what are some upgrades that I do think would improve the, this pistol, considering its design purpose? I think lower profile sights would help, uh, especially get them like a SIG SAS type sights. I think that would be great, or the laser I've been talking about. Now, I wouldn't be totally averse to having a laser mounted here, although I'd rather wait for it to be there if I'm gonna use a laser. I really don't think a laser is needed, but a laser here would help maybe break up the outline of a pistol a bit when it's in your pocket. So there's some upsides and downsides of that. I would wanna make sure that it is a type of laser that automatically comes on. I don't have to be pushing any buttons to turn it on in a self-defense situation. Now probably you're not gonna see the laser anyway in a self-defense situation. You're gonna be focused on the threat. Your heart rate's gonna be way up scared shitless so uh, it's going to be point shooting and honestly that's the best way to learn to shoot for self-defense in my opinion now what about some things out improvements i would like to see that would probably that would have to be done by the factory one is i would love to see a paddle magazine release one it would be ambidextrous two it'd be covered by the trigger guard on your holster so it wouldn't accidentally eject the magazine now this the this is probably the best button magazine i think i've ever seen on any pistol and uh it's pretty resistant to accidentally disengaging the magazine. I've tried rolling around on the, on the floor with it and no problems at all with it disengaging. So that's good. But an ambi mag release would be good. Also it would allow you to pinch operate it and maintain a firm grip on the pistol while ejecting the magazine. Of course that would have to be something done by Springfield Armory. Now the other thing I would like to see is a slide release for left-handed shooters. And uh, that would fit perfectly in the little fence here on this side, be completely out of the way. And then it would be a totally, with the paddle magazine release, would be a totally ambidextrous pistol, which would be just freaking awesome. One other minor that complaint is, I think uh, I would like to eliminate the little witness hole on top of the, the chamber there. If you're checking, using that to check around the chamber, uh, stupid. I mean, the, if it's a, the brass has gotten a smudge of black on it, you're just not going to see it. Chamber check. That's how you properly check to see if you have a round in the chamber. Now, one big thing I would like to see on it is I've come to call, call these slide serrations on the Hellcat. I call them slide decorations. After using the Springfield or the, after using the Sig P365, which has nice aggressive serrations, very similar to the aggressive serrations on the FNS9C, these are just too slick, um, and there's no reason for it. They should be some nice grippy slide serrations, not slide decorations.
Now, of course, if you've seen my Caring for Self-Defense series, you know that I'm an advocate for being, uh, or my series on the ambidextral gunfire, you know I'm an advocate for being ambidextrous with your firearm. And that's for, so you can make optimal use of cover. And so, you can, with point shooting, that's really easy because the really the most difficult part for being ambidextrous really is training your eyes to both pick up the sights. So if I shoot right-handed, my right eye picks it up. If I shoot left-handed, my left eye picks it up. And uh, it's really easy to learn. Now, that's for optimal use of cover. Now, once you become ambidextrous, I advocate that you go with primary initial presentation of the firearm with left hand and that means holstering so that your left hand of course can retrieve the firearm so whether it's inside the waistband if you're wearing it in a you know in a pack like like I've got here you can, it'll be set up for a left hand draw now why is that there's a, a number of reasons but uh, okay I start with one which is kind of important for me or at least used to be I don't ride motorcycles much anymore but if you ride a motorcycle you know that the throttle is going to be on your right hand and the front brake is there as well so you can control a motorcycle with this with just your right hand throttle front brake you can do your shifting just by jamming it with your left foot and, and of course operate your rear brake with your right foot. You don't absolutely need your left hand on a motorcycle uh, to run the clutch or to hang on. So you can run the motorcycle with just your right hand. That means if you need to present your weapon while on a motorcycle, you're gonna have to do it left-handed. And so that's one reason. The other is if you're in law enforcement and you're uh, doing a traffic stop and say it's, uh, you know, some traffic stops are kind of high risk. And uh, so if, as you're approaching the vehicle, you're going to have, with the left hand draw and presentation, you have a better angle on the driver of the vehicle that you've just stopped. If you are do, doing a draw with the right hand, you just don't, you really are destroying your angles, especially as your range tightens up closer and closer to the driver's side window. So you want left-hand presentation, in my opinion, for being in law enforcement, at least if you're doing traffic stops. Now, the other thing is uh, simply that in a typical self-defense situation, you are fighting. Uh, it's usually a very close range, even as close as I am here to the camera, with about three feet. Or less and so you want the ability to punch stab with your right hand which is usually going to be your you know a little bit stronger hand for most people and so fighting with your right hand shooting with your left which, you know doesn't require as much strength to operate this as it does that so use your left hand yeah, for that reason now, of course, also you can use the left, your right hand to uh, balance yourself, catch yourself. Again, usually going to be, for most people, it's going to be their stronger hand. Also to control children if they're in the area to get them, uh, you know, secure them or get them behind you. And so that's, you know, all the reasons also to shoot left-handed, at least initially. And then as you have the opportunity to make use of cover, then be ambidextrous, shooting left or right, depending on the cover available to you. So let's talk about holsters. I think the first holder, holster you should get for your Hellcat is a pocket carry holster. And this is uh, by Borai, B-O-R-A-I-I. -I. I'll include a link down in the description. And this one's actually for a PF9 because I haven't received mine yet, but it at least demonstrates how this works. Uh, basically fully covers the trigger and then this hook here inside your clothes is what kind of hangs up as you draw it out of your pocket and and freeze the pistol the trigger so you can make use of it okay this doesn't qu fit quite perfectly but enough for the demonstration purposes here now what I like is I mean, this is really well made it's very simple it's just two layers and good nice quality rivets there that I've had these I've had these holsters for about uh, this one's about a year now and it's I've used it a lot I've worn it in my back pocket rolled around on the ground with my PF9 in it and you can see it looks looks great 
no no damage all the rivets are still in good shape now beyond that of course is uh your you know inside the waistband type holster this is by desanti it's their slim tuck and it is uh, for a, a mass produced uh, holsters actually i'm pretty impressed uh, it's quite affordable you can get it on amazon i'll include a link down below uh, good good retention and um, I've got it set up for, uh, again, of course for me, uh, left hand to put it inside the waistband on the left side. Um, and this is a, a, seems to be a really nice uh, IWB holster. Um, I'm not sure how often I'm going to use it. I just find inside the waistband just annoying. Uh, it's so much easier just to, to pick up the pistol in a pocket holster and toss it in, you know, throw it in my pocket. Now, of course, the other thing is, the, of course, the uh, Heel People Runner's Kit Bag. And this is great for, like, um, him today, out mountain biking. Zips up inside there. I can quickly get to it from the left-hand side here. Because on my mountain bike, even though it's not a motorcycle, uh, the major controls are on my right-hand side. I have my, in my case, on my mountain bike set up with the rear brake on the right-hand side. And then my shifters are on the right-hand side. And so I can pretty well control my mountain bike riding with just my right hand. And, of course, draw this for any mountain lions that, or grizzlies that threaten me while I'm out mountain biking. Now, there are other uh, holsters that I'm going to be getting in and testing. Uh, there is uh, an inside the waistband I'm uh, going to be getting from Barai, so I'll report on that once I get it. It looks pretty nice on the internet, so we'll see how that does. Uh, but for me, uh, the other thing I also like for carry is the uh, Wyoming Traders Cody CCW Vest. And I've done videos on that, and I've got my, my vest set up for my FNS 9C, where... I've actually cut out all the stuff that they include in the vest from the factory, the stupid little soft holster that doesn't really pr protect your trigger very well. So I pulled that off, cut that all out, and then put in a, a big uh, uh, Velcro patch in there, and then use the, uh, which comes with the uh, Crossbreed Ohai, a o o h a i modular holster and so it's a velcro holster that's kydex leather velcro and so it sticks inside the vest good retention protects the trigger guard really trigger really well and um and so that's how my my uh my wyoming traders vest set up now my next generation vest when i get a new vest uh, i'll probably or maybe even get an ohio ohio modular holster for the Hellcat and then just start carrying a Hellcat in my vest as well because it is lighter and smaller than the FNS 9C. The FNS 9C with its girth, especially in the, the pistol grip, does print a little bit on the vest and so it would be nice to have the, the Hellcat you know, in there just to, to knock that down, that little bit of printing down just a little bit more. Now another kind of a holster I've uh, used on, on some of my other pistols, particularly the uh, Ruger LCP and the uh, Caltech PF9, is for mountain biking on hot days when a, a, the runner's kit bag that mounts on my chest like that, is, if it's just too hot, I'm not going to wear this because it's basically blocking the radiator. And so I'll wear a uh, an ex Max Expedition pouch on my belt. And I've modified those to fit uh, some of the pistols I carry. The LC I have a pouch that's uh, just perfectly fit for the LCP. And another pouch that fits just a little bit tight, but it fits the PF9. Now, I did have to cut out some of the guts out of those pouches, but they've worked really good for that. And I can carry the pistol plus a um, little bit of safety gear with me as well. Whereas with this... This bag here, I not only get to carry my pistol, an extra mag, maybe two or three extra mags. I also have some first aid, you know, more extensive first aid, get aid gear in here for this. So this is what I'll, even if it's warm, I'll often wear uh, this in grizzly country or uh, mountain lion country. So anyway, this is Mark Laughlin with the Ambidextra Gunfighter. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.